A show that sounds as good as it looks. Hmm, this is so good. So good. With sounds so amazing, you can almost taste them. A favorite for foodies and other Northwest goodies. Weekday mornings on Fox 13. This morning, health experts are warning about an out-of-control spike in cases of sexually transmitted diseases. Last year, cases of chlamydia were up 3%, gonorrhea up 2.6%, and cases of HIV went up 16% after trending downwards for the last several years. But here's the big one. Syphilis and congenital syphilis are both up 25%. That's the biggest annual increase in nearly 75 years. For people not familiar with congenital genital syphilis. It's when a mother passes the infection on to her baby during pregnancy. So for more on this, I want to bring in Elizabeth Finley with the National Coalition of STD Directors. Thank you so much for joining us, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. Now, what's going on here? I just kind of went over the numbers and why these numbers are so dramatic because we've seen an increase in the last couple of years or so. So why are these numbers climbing so dramatically? Sure, there are really two issues at play here. So first, funding has been a big issue for the field. We've seen a 41% decline in funding for prevention services like outreach to highly affected groups, education, awareness building, clinical services. When you adjust for inflation, those funds have dropped 41% over the past 20 years and services just can't keep up. The second issue we've seen is really related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, lots of people go in for their routine health care appointments and may find out that they have an infection and get treatment. That keeps it from spreading. But so many of those appointments stopped during the pandemic, and now we're seeing these pop up again. Well, it's fitting that you're joining us this morning because it just so happens that the CDC's prevention conference is underway right now. Of course, you mentioned the funding is not available to really make that outreach and education possible in all the communities that need to really hear this. But what's the hope and outcome of this conference? It's a great opportunity for folks to get together and talk about the latest innovation and research. Um, innovation isn't the perfect solution. Honestly, clinics and programs need to be able to staff themselves, uh, get out into communities. Uh, but it continues to be tremendously important that we have research on how to treat people better, on what kinds of medications might be more helpful, on how to reach the most highly affected populations. And so this conference is a great opportunity to find out really what's on the cutting edge as we move forward. And speaking of populations in terms of who's being impacted the most from this dramatic rise, who is the, the population we're talking about right here? Are we talking about a particular age group, race or culture, socioeconomic group? What are you seeing? Access to health care plays such a tremendous role in the rise in STD cases. And so if you think about who has a hard time accessing health care in this country, um, it really aligns well with who is most impacted by this outbreak. Uh, people of color, black and brown people, young people especially. Young people have half of STD infections in this country, and it has to do with their ability to get to health care. It has to do with stigma. It has to do with their access to information and education. What are you seeing particularly in the LA, Orange County, metro region? What, do you, what are you seeing specifically here? The CDC hasn't released state and local data yet. That will come out in the spring. If it tracks with what we've seen in recent years, we expect it to align pretty well with the national data. Uh, what we have seen in LA County is that LA has been one of the leading cities when we've seen the national outbreak of monkeypox. And that outbreak has made it even harder for people to get services for uh, more traditional STDs like uh, syphilis and gonorrhea and chlamydia. Um, 
we're really fortunate in that we're seeing the number of monkeypox cases go down. Uh, that gives us some hope as we move forward. But the reality is that the folks on the front lines in clinics and in programs need resources to do their jobs. And as you mentioned, monkeypox, a huge issue right here in our area. But why is it that it's really deterring people from getting treated or kind of being diagnosed for other things as well? So the clinics that are on the front lines of the monkeypox outbreak are the STD clinics that serve people year round, day in, day out for more traditional sexually transmitted infections. Um, monkeypox is something that, that clinics are still adapting to. They're trying to figure out how to serve people, how to do outreach. They have not been provided with any additional resources mm -hmm. by the federal government to do their jobs. And so what we see happening is clinics will say, we've had to transition into being monkeypox clinics instead of traditional STD clinics. Uh, we're the right place for people to seek care. We're happy to pitch in. Uh, this is the right thing to do. But the reality is they haven't been given more staff to work on this. They haven't been giving, given more money for supplies to work on this. And there are only so many appointments that can pop up in a day. So clinics are serving monkeypox patients who are having uh, very acute health issues, who are in tremendous amounts of pain, who need uh, vaccinations uh, to help stop this outbreak. And um, and that's just cutting into the level of service that they can provide for other infections. That's really unfortunate to hear. What are people uh, able to do? Is there something they can do at home? Can they test themselves? Or how are there ways to reverse this trend? Sure, at home testing is a great option. We have a program called Check Yourself, which allows people to do simple tests at home. There are other home testing programs. Um, People can still go to their regular health care providers for STI testing, um, and we recommend that. Uh, getting tested as a part of your routine uh, primary care appointments every year, your OBGYN appointments every year, and of course getting tested between partners or if you suspect you might have been exposed to an infection. Um, those are just, just general good, smart health behaviors, and we recommend them. Sounds good. Thank you so much for all that information, how people can protect themselves and what to do next if they kind of think they're not feeling well and they don't have the services readily available to them. Elizabeth Finley, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Maria. Let's